Hey guys, welcome back to Diet in Japan. My name is Brooke. I live in Japan. Uh, I've lost some weight. A lot of my videos are about weight loss, but today I wanted to make a video about how I came here to Japan, which is something I was very interested in, like hearing other people's stories when I was trying to get a visa to come and live and work here in this country, which I, uh, I recommend it. I'm having a great life. I'm having the best life uh, since coming here. I mean, my life was pretty good in the U.S. too, but uh, I really like it here. I hope I can stay here for a real, 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 real long time. Um, so yeah, I want to make this video because uh, if you want to come to Japan, hopefully this video can help inform your decision uh, about how or if you really want to come here and help you uh, help guide you. Uh, the best thing for you to do, though, is, like, do your own research. Um, you know, just Google. <laughs> but I just wanted to share a little bit of my story with you. So, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. So, um, I came here about two and a half years ago, a little over two and a half years ago. I will be here, will have been here three years in March 2018 and yeah um, I came here on a working visa and uh, I am about to actually finish my three-year working visa but I'm going to renew it um, and I came here with an Akaiwa if you don't know what an Akaiwa is it basically means a is like a goal English a and then Kiowa is conversation so English conversation it's an English conversation school and um, what that means is is that it is not a regular school like K through 12 school that you where like children go and um, a public school or even a private school for that matter I mean it is a private school but it's like um, the the, even the Japanese people who work there are not certified um, teachers. They don't have like degrees in education or anything. But all of the Japanese teachers that work at, um, at Kaiwa's are usually like extremely fluent in English. Like better than even me, probably. They're certainly better at grammar. Like Japanese people are really good at grammar. Um, they're just not, like they lack in, you know, the native native slang and pronunciation and stuff like that. Anyways, um, the company that I came here with is a company called Eon, A-E-O-N. It's also, like, a supermarket chain here, but they pronounce it differently. But, I mean, whatever. It's It's got a blue logo. If you, like, Google Eon Teach English in Japan, it'll pop right up, and you can go see their website. Um, I decided to come here with Eon because it seemed like the quickest way I could get here. And I had been wanting to come to visit Japan for a really long time. Like, I'm not someone who knew my whole life that I wanted to move to Japan. I just, um, I don't know. Like, I always, I always, I, I saw Japan on the internet, and I was like, oh, it's like a cute place, the food looks good. You know, I had like a, I guess a regular medium interest. I wasn't like super, I mean, I don't know, otaku about it, or weeaboo, or whatever the kids are saying these days. I didn't have like super, super, super like, chomi bukai. Like, I was just like, oh yeah, Japan seems cool, and I wanted to visit Japan, but the problem is, is I didn't have any money to come and visit Japan. So, like, looking around, I was, I, I don't know, there was even, like, at a time I thought, well, I just need to get out of this country, like, I need to go see the world. I was just out of college, but I didn't have any money, and I was like, how can I do this? And for a while, I even thought of joining the Peace Corps, <laughs> because I had a degree in art history, and I was, like, Googling things like, what do people with bachelors in art history do? like, to get paid, and, and I read somewhere that, like, some famous people, like, they, a lot of them become writers, and, you know, stuff like that, and I read some guy that was a reporter, like, who has a degree in art history, went and joined the Peace Corps. This is getting way off track. So basically, like, I just wanted to leave the country, and somehow I was Googling, like, visiting Japan, and then, like, I came across an article that was like, but maybe you could live there. 
and I was like, maybe I could live there like for a little while, like that would be cool. I would get to see another part of the world, totally different from where I live now. And so then I started Googling like basically work in Japan, how to like teach in Japan. I, I, I didn't know any Japanese at this point, like I knew like konnichiwa, like konnichiwa, like how all like you know, people in America kind of know that, and like, sushi! And literally that was it. Like, I wasn't a huge anime fan, so I didn't really have any of that, like, background. Like, maybe I knew the word kawaii, which is like, kawaii is like, cute. But like, probably, and arigato, and just arigato, and that's all I knew. And I started Googling, like, well, how am I going to get there and, like, live there and work there if you don't speak any Japanese? And it turns out it's pretty easy. Uh, because Japan uh, has a lot of jobs for English teachers and usually to be qualified to do that job is you have to have a you have to be a native English speaker usually uh, there are other ways to do this but usually you have to be a native English speaker and you have to have a degree from a four-year university uh, so and actually so the company that I mentioned the company that I work for called Eon which was the English conversation school you did need a you did need those requirements. You had to be from a native um, English speaking country and you needed to have a bachelor's degree and it didn't matter in what. Basically I think they want you to have the degree because it makes it a lot easier for the visa processing. Um, so they were a very reputable, reputable company. Um, they interviewed like it seems like year round. They were, they were interviewing a lot and they were coming to the Midwest where I'm from um, pretty soon. Uh, with with JET program, it's like they're very selective because it's run through the Japanese government and it and it said it would like take a year to apply and I was like, I don't have a year to wait. Okay? Basically it took me like six months from the time I applied to the time I got to Japan, which is pretty standard for um, like how I was hired. Uh, and for the company I was hired for. So anyways, the company is called Eon. Um, this is not like a, a wow, I'm gonna really praise this company or wow, I'm gonna really like bash this like a tell-all secrets. Um, I, I know a lot of people like make those videos like the, the truth about this company. Like if you read or you see anything like that, just like take it with a grain of salt that that person is probably like scorned and also that person might be crazy. Just like you know, always take everything with a grain of salt with someone who is too passionate either one way or the other. So what I'm saying is, trust me, I'm completely neutral. And also, I, I don't work for this company anymore, so it's like not an advertisement. And I, I ended on amicable terms, and it was just because I wanted to move. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I came here with a company called Eon. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the application process and what I had to do. Okay, so basically when I applied to this company called Eon, which you can look up all this information on their website. I haven't looked at their website in a long time since I applied, so this was just true for me. When I applied, it might have changed. Uh, but basically what I had to do was I had to uh, like fill out an online application and then I had to write an essay about why I wanted to come and live and work in Japan. And then depending on that, they like gave and like where I like applied to the... Um, the info meeting session and the uh, kind of interview process that they have. Like, they have it in different locations all over um, the world, the English speaking world, but also, especially in the United States, which is quite a wide uh, and expansive country. Um, so, I applied to go do an interview in Chicago, and they were like, Yeah, I come to Chicago. Uh, like, basically prepare a small lesson and uh, you're gonna have to take like a, a, a short grammar test and a short spelling test and so um, I think my short lesson that I prepared was uh, using adjectives, using describing words, so I printed out a bunch of pictures of like well-known things, like people, actors that I know are well known all over the world, so I like, printed out a picture of Johnny Depp, like Pirates of the Caribbean is popular all over the world, Pictured out, I, pic I printed out a picture of Santa Claus, which is like, they know who Santa Claus is, is, is in Japan, I, picture, I printed out like a picture of like, I think a famous, 
like I don't know Abe, the the prime minister of Japan, and just some other, and Barack Obama, like just some other like pictures, and then I like did a small little lesson on like describing words and. Yeah, just like five minutes, and I just like, you pretend that the other people in your little uh, session are your students. And so, yeah, that was the little five minute lesson I did to prepare for the uh, spelling and grammar test because it's just like they're like trying to trick you. They'll give you words like recommends. Like, is it two C's or two M's or like commence? I, I don't know, it's like weird words that like like a, a lot of people in the English speaking world spell wrong all the time and then like our smartphones or the internet will just correct you immediately so um just like little words like that like kind of just like what I did is I think I looked up like commonly misspelled English words and I like just memorized how to spell them and then I memorized like and then I looked like commonly common grammatical mistakes and then yeah I, I don't know, I like studied that for a little while, just like in my sp sp spare time, so I knew that I could, um, I don't know, take that test. <laughs> because there's a lot of people, what will happen is you'll come to a little info session, they'll so show you a video about someone that lives in Japan, that works for the company, and then they'll say to you, like, you know, like, oh, are you ready to come here? They'll, they'll like give you like five things, like like reasons, like are can you make the commitment? Do you have the financial commitment? Like is it okay to be away from your family? Stuff like that. I don't remember like fully. They'll give you a whole spiel, and um, yeah, and then you have to take like the spelling test and the uh, grammar test, and then they uh, and then they like give you they put you into groups, and then you do like a five minute lesson. And then you take a break or something for lunch, and then when you come back, something like this, they like give you an envelope that says like either later that day or the next day, or sometimes even the next next day, they will basically be having a one-on-one -on -one interview with you. And then in the one-on-one -on -one interview, they'll give you like a little page from like a really old textbook or something and they'll be like tri tri like there'll be two people that are interviewed two recruiters and one of them will be like judging you and the other one will be your pretend student and I totally forget what mine was about something about weather or something and like basically they just want you to be friendly and nice and encouraging and also like make corrections when people make mistakes you know just be a good person <laughs> Um, and be normal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, it was, it was good and I actually really liked my recruiters and basically, um, what happened to me is they actually ended up hiring me on the spot, uh, which I think was kind of rare and they said like, yeah, like normally they'll tell you like, okay, we'll call you back later. Like we'll call you in a week or something. They told me on the spot, they were like, yeah, we know we want to hire you blah 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 um don't like because I had told them I had applied to a few other places ECC was another place that I applied to and they said like don't I wasn't like a jerk about it I was just like I really want to go to Japan like you're my first choice but if you say no to me like I, I'm gonna go to interviews at other places and I think they I, I don't know I, I don't know why they were like hired me on the spot maybe I, I don't know maybe I did a good job not to toot my own horn but Whatever, um, yeah, they, I, I think one of the most important tips I would give to you if you're doing an interview for any Ikaiwa or any job ever is just be friendly, be kind, especially if you're going to be teaching in a foreign country, you should be likable. Basically, there are eons all over this country, and I got placed in one at, um, in, a, in Iwate Prefecture, which is in the north, in uh, the capital city there, which is called Morioka, which is a lovely, lovely, lovely place, and I love it. And I actually still live quite close to there, um, probably a two and a half hour drive, or 45 minutes on the bullet train, aka the Shinkansen. So, yeah, I got placed at a school in Morioka. Morioka is not a big city, but it is not, like, a really, like, Inaka, like, countryside city. Um, it's, like, the biggest city in Iwate. But it's, like, you know, it's, like, a small town. It's, like, a suburbia kind of-esque town. You know, it's got, you know, it's got, it had a foreigner bar there. 
it had some other thing, you know, it has, it has, a, it has a mall, it has, it has, I don't know, it's like a normal, it's a normal city, it's not Tokyo, but, and it's certainly, it's not Sendai, the city I live in now, which is a city of a million people, I think Morioka had 300,000 people. Anyways, so I moved to Morioka and I worked at um, Eon Ekaiwa for one year and I, I feel like that was a completely fine thing that I did and it was really cool because I got to meet my, um, my now current partner of almost two years. He was not a student at the school, I just met him um, at like a, like a, uh, like a meet, like an international mixer at a bar in Morioka. Like, that's where we met. But, um, yeah, so he wasn't like a student of mine. He was already fluent in English um, when we met, which is really good because I didn't really start studying Japanese until, like, after we met. So it was nice that we met in English. This is getting totally off topic. Anyway, so I worked for Eon, and yeah, I feel like, I, I mean, like, I guess I recommend it. I feel like it's a fine company to work for. It's really good. Um, I'll just give you, like, some really, like, basic pros and cons, not just to Eon, but just, like, to working at any Ekaiwa or English Conversation School, which is very different than working as an ALT, which is an assistant language teacher, which is where you work in actual Japanese schools. So that would be companies like Interact or companies like, uh, I don't know, JET, the JET program is ALTs. So let's start with the positives. So the general positives for me and someone like me who knew zero Japanese, who just like thought, oh, I'll just go to Japan for a year and make some money and like experience a new culture and way of life. Uh, basically, so they will, um, they secure everything with your visa for you. They do all of the paperwork for you um, and including, and now I think Eon actually, I don't know this for fact, but I actually think they might even fly you over now. Before they didn't fly you over. When I when I started working there, they didn't fly you over. Now I think they might fly you over. But anyway, so some of the bonuses are um, they will secure all your visa paperwork for you. They will, once you get to Japan, they will take care of you. They'll come pick you up from the airport. They will come take you to a training facility. They will adjust you to Japan if you have never been in this country at all. They will teach you how to do everything. The Once you get sent to your school in the city you'll be working at, the teachers there and most of the staff there, if not all of the staff there, speaks English fluently and they will set up a bank account for you. They will take you to the doctors if you're sick. They will um, help you go get a cell phone. They will help set up all your apartment. Oh, they give you an apartment. You have to live in company apartments. So they give you an apartment. So like basically all the difficult things about living as a foreigner in Japan, I mean, not all the difficult things, there are other difficult things, but like all the paperwork and red tape and stuff, like there is someone holding your hand doing that for you, which is lovely. Um, if you're coming here by yourself, at, even if you studied Japanese at university, like setting up, like red tape in Japan is just like a pain in the tuchus. Like setting up, like leasing a car, getting a driver's license, like stuff like that, like but renting an apartment is so such a pain in the neck if you don't have a Japanese person helping you. Even if you are fluent or near fluent in Japanese, like, I, I, you know, like, <laughs> Japanese use three different alphabets and it's, you know, kanji is difficult, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know, just like, it's really nice to be helped by the company. That's like one of the major best things. Yeah, so the best things are they'll get you an apartment, a bank account, a phone, they'll set up your internet. Um, if you ever have any problem, there will be a Japanese person there who's fluent in English to help you with everything. Like, you need to know zero Japanese. It's better if you know some Japanese, but you can know zero and it'll be fine. Like, they'll hold your hand, especially at Eon. And I think this is true for a lot of Ekaiwas. Um, so, yeah, that is, that is something cool about working for Ikaiwas, uh, and also they give you an apartment, and they'll help you get a bicycle, and they'll help you do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, 
and they give you a one-year contract. So this is going to lead me into my cons. My cons about uh, working... At, oh, oh yeah, and like rent and everything is uh, a fixed rate. So that's another thing that is like leading me into my cons. The cons are, um, in general, you have to... I mean, certainly not in your first year, you're not going to be able to bend this rule. I think if you've worked for the company for many, 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 many millennia, many, many, many years, um, I've heard of people being able to change this up a little bit. But basically the rules are, is you have to live in company apartment. You can't go get your own apartment, which like, if you don't know any Japanese, you're not even going to be able to go get your own apartment. So you have to live in the company provided apartments, the flat rates. Uh, for company apartments was about $500 a month, which they will just take and pay right out of your paycheck for you. Um, yep, they you get on a company uh, health insurance and they'll just take that out of your paycheck right away. They pretty much set up everything for you. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, it's cool if you, and you have to live by yourself. So that means if you like meet someone and then you want to move in with them, maybe you can go move in with them, but they're not allowed to come. You're not really supposed to have someone else coming to live in your apartment. And uh, I think it would be like fine if you wanted to go move in with them, but they would be like, you still have to pay for the apartment. Like, it's still going to come out of your paycheck, even if you're not living there. I think that would be the case. I'm sure there are ways around it, depending on how you renegotiate your contract. But this is just, like, when you first come here. Another thing is, is at the time when I was hired, is, like, you're not allowed to have a driver's license. Uh, which, I mean, the trains in Japan and are good. But, uh, especially, like, where I was living in Morioka, it would have been a lot more convenient if I could have a driver's license. I don't know. So, like, just be aware of that is you're not allowed to have a driver's license. I have a driver's license now. I no longer work for that company. I went and got a driver's license because it's a lot more convenient to have a driver's license, especially if you are like me, someone who's been driving. Um, I'm 29 now, and I got my license when I was 16, but I started driving when I was 15. So I've been almost driving for 15 years, so it's really weird not to drive for a year. So anyways, you're not allowed to have a driver's license, and, um, yeah, those are my two negatives. Uh, another thing is, is, like, you're not allowed to speak any Japanese, usually, in general. So, if Japanese is something you were looking forward to using, nah, you're not really, like, that's not really why you're there, right? You're there to speak English. Um, whereas if you work in, like, a public school, like, you're probably gonna have to speak Japanese more to like your coworkers that are not English teachers because you'll be working like with science and math teachers and stuff like that. But yeah, um, just like some final notes I have on working at Akaiwa is like, basically like you're gonna be hired because you're going to be likable and you're going to be nice and they're, you know, and, and you're gonna be a hard worker, you know, in general like, Japanese people have very good worth work ethic. Um, you know, I think American people have pretty good work ethic too, but like Japanese people tend to stay at work really, really late, even if they're not really doing anything. So it's more like they just have to be in a building, basically because they're not allowed to leave before their boss leaves or their senpai leaves or whatever. Oh, so another thing about working at an Ikaiwa, specifically the Ikaiwa I worked at, which is called Eon, was that like, like, I've read a lot of things on the internet where people are like, meh, 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 the truth, it wasn't that good. Or, Your experience working at an Akaiwa, and especially an Akaiwa like Eon, is going to depend entirely on a few things. The first thing is going to be, like, your attitude. If you are a dick or a jerk, pardon my French, like, you're probably not going to have a good time. If you're not flexible, like, don't move to a foreign country, you know? If you're super sensitive, don't move to a foreign country, just any foreign country. 
you know, like just be flexible and try to be positive and just realize you're coming to a country with hundreds of years of history and things are going to be a little different and people are going to do sometimes things that like literally blow your mind. You're like, I would have never done it that way, which just happens, which still happens to me today. Um, and I've lived here two and a half years, which is not that long, but you know what I'm saying. But just like try to stay positive is like my number one piece of advice. My second piece of advice for you, if you want to come to Japan and work in Akaiwa, is that like know this is that like Akaiwa's like working at each location, like it, a lot of it depends on which location you get placed at. Working at an Eon Akaiwa is like working at a Chili's or, I don't know, some other corporate chain in whatever country you live in. So Chili's is like a restaurant chain in the, Uni the United States. And like, the co- like it's gonna be different. Like every Chili's is a little slightly different. They try- do they all have the same menu? Do they all offer the same things? Yes. Is that the same thing with like Eon? Yeah, they all offer the same courses. They're all supposed to be generally the same, but right, they're all- they all have their own little like flavor right and they all have their own different mix of people and co-workers so like just be aware that anything you read that's like positive or negative about working at these places it's it's like it's like what one person said about working at one walmart in the middle of ohio you know what i mean like you 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 can't you have to take that with a grain of salt and they're all different you know and i feel like the co-workers i worked with were fine it was fine I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you have coworkers you get along with, sometimes you don't, and you just do your best and you, like, do your job. <laughs> you know, whatever. So, basically what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, I think if you want a fast and quick and fun and good experience way to get to Japan, and they'll give you, generally, they give you a three-year visa to start you off. Um, they'll give you a three-year visa and they'll give you a one-year contract available for being extended. Um, after six months, they'll like have a an extension meeting with you uh, where they'll, they'll offer you another year contract or they'll offer you, I don't know, whatever. It's like negotiable. But basically, yeah, I don't know. So I came and I worked at uh, an Ikawa and I felt like it was a good way to get here and it was a good way to get my foot in the door and I am I'm happy I did it. I really am. I think in general it was it was a good experience and um, it paved the way for the things I'm doing now which is a little bit more about like it's like I like it a little bit better um, not that I disliked working at an Akaiwa but yeah I get to do a lot of different things with my job now uh, which I'll make a video if you want to see a video about me talking about what I do now and my job now and um, I'll I'll probably be making a video about that in the future uh, if you work at corporate at Eon I don't know please don't sue me for I don't think I really said anything bad about the company but yeah I in fact I, I recommend it so I think I'm helping you maybe basically what I'm trying to say is you should come to Japan and if you want to do it fast work for an Akaiwa, like I did, which was Eon. Uh, in the future, I'm probably going to be making more videos about life in Japan and um, my current job and my current uh, study habits for Japanese. I want to make more videos about how I'm studying Japanese and stuff like that, my current travel plans, and maybe one day I'll even introduce you to my partner, who's pretty shy. Uh, if you want to know what he looks like, you can follow me on Snapchat. I uh, always make videos about him and uh, yeah you can follow me here on tumblr on snapchat on instagram all the links are in the description you can hit all the buttons down below there's like a subscribe button if you want to be friends on the internet yeah subscribe to my channel if you want to I make videos about losing weight and about living in Japan as a foreigner I love you all so much I will catch you guys in the next video video